University. I'm the Assistant uh, uh, Vice President for Information Technology. And recently, I was appointed the OER Chair for Access and Success uh, for Lebanon and the MENA region. And um, I'm, I'm so delighted to be here uh, among you. And when uh, Fabio uh, asked me to present, you know, I said, it's my pleasure, of course. And Christina, uh, 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 also thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share the knowledge I have with uh, uh, the team members and our colleagues uh, in this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, let me start by uh, sharing my screen. And the way we're going to do it, I don't know. Uh, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to take, I'm going to cover the, the open educational resources, the basics and the, the licenses and stuff like that. And at the second part, you know, of my presentation, I will, uh, uh, I will talk about uh, uh, what I have done here, how I integrated the OER at the, uh, my university, what are the lessons I have learned, you know, doing this in Lebanon, because I've been doing this since 2014. Uh, 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 in my university and at the national level. And of course, you know, I'll be uh, ready to uh, collaborate and uh, uh, help uh, uh, in any way I can if, if my help is needed uh, in Jordan, in Tunis, uh, anywhere, okay? So this is, uh, uh, let me just uh, allow me to share uh, my screen. Morning, I'm going to share the count. And I'm going to take this one, I'm gonna search. There we go. Can you see uh, uh, Christina? Yes, yes, yes. All right, let me. Uh, and uh, we'll, uh, I, I will try to, to go fast uh, uh, so that we will, uh, we have an hour or more maybe, Christina? Um, we have one hour and 30. Um, um, so oh, very good. And, so and we will also have a conversation and a discussion and questions. Yes. So up to you if you want people to interrupt your presentation for asking questions or if we will have questions. No, I will go. I will go quickly. You know, I will go through the the, the, the material and to bring everybody on board. You know, at the same thing. and then we'll at the end. You know, we'll I'll be ready to answer and discuss any any questions uh, the participants might have. Okay. Yes. So, le, yeah, so, okay, so uh, first, you know, this is, uh, I will start with the UNESCO recommendation on OER, I, I will talk about Creative Commons licenses and then the OER, what's OER and the five R's of open, and then, as I said, you know, the lesson learned and the future uh, direction concerning open education uh, and OER. Let me start, you know, and this is a very important uh, uh, slide, you know, that, uh, and the reason we have it here, because when we talk about OER, the term OER, the, 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 it was coined back in 2002 by UNESCO uh, at one of the uh, forums. And the, in 2008, uh, we had, you know, also UNESCO work, we had the Cape Town Open Education Declaration, and then Four years later, we had in 2012, we had the Paris OER declaration. Until we arrived at 2017, we had a, you know, a, a, a big conference in Ljubljana and uh, uh, where we have the OER action plan. And it was, uh, uh, the title was from awareness to action concerning OER. But the most important, and I consider it a milestone uh, and a very important historic document, what happened last year in 2019, where now we have a, a, the UNESCO final OER recommendation, which was approved by uh, uh, 193 members unanimously, and it was approved uh, uh, not just voting, and this is something uh, very important. And why you know uh, this uh, uh, document is important why this recommendation is important because this recommendation uh, uh, it is considered you know an uh, 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 official unesco instrument that that help and gives the uh, governments uh, all over the world you know uh, those recommendations in order uh, to help them support the open education movement in uh, uh, their countries Okay, 
And of course, you know, the uh, way to collaborate between different uh, uh, countries and governments worldwide. As I said, you know, 193 uh, government voted on this uh, recommendation. And, you know, uh, this recommendation or the final 2019 recommendation, uh, it outlines for us five areas of action. Those five areas, the first one is building the capacity of stakeholder to create, access, reuse, adapt, and redistribute OER. And of course, you know, like uh, 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 there is a link, you know, I will share my slides uh, later on with Christina so she can distribute uh, or post them, uh, whatever. But, you know, you will have a link to the final recommendation where you have the full document uh, and you can go into more details. And it's worth noting that those documents, you know, or those recommendations are, are done in different languages. In Arabic, uh, you, you find the, the uh, you find it in Italian, you find it in German, all different type of language in Spanish. Okay, so you have all uh, languages available for those of you who will be interested. The second action is developing supportive policy for AR. So here in the second action, they talk about the policy for AR. And the third action, they talk about encouraging inclusive and equitable quality OER, and then for nurturing the creation of sustainability models for OER. And the fifth action, talking about promoting and reinforcing international cooperation in OER. So each one of those actions here with all the details that you will find in the document, okay? Uh, 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 this is very important for all of us to understand. And moreover, what they have uh, provided in this uh, recommendation, they provided a universal uh, definition of OER. So now we have a unified uh, OER definition. Now, um, as you all know, maybe that we have so many definitions, you know, spreading around open educational resources from uh, uh, creative commons, uh, from uh, uh, different uh, visionaries and uh, uh, advocate people, you know, uh, uh, they have, we have different uh, definition of OER, but now the official UNESCO OER definition, uh, the, the one that you see here, you can uh, read it. Here we're talking about all type of learning, teaching and uh, research material in any format, okay, and medium that reside in the public domain or under a copyright that have been released under an open license. So you see open license, that's what I will be talking about later on, that permit no cost. No cost, it means uh, free access, you know, will be able to reuse them, repurpose them, adapt, adapt them and redistribute uh, those resources. And of course, we have also the definition of an open license. Uh, which refer to a license that respect the intellectual property right of the copyright owner. And this is something very important here to, to know that, you know, when, whenever you say open or OER or uh, open license, you know, people say, well, well what about the copyright of the, uh, of the original author of the work of the, of the whatever uh, resource you find, but, you know, the copyright uh, uh, of the owner or the, the person who created this work is always there. And the copyright is still there, but later on we'll see what this license will permit us to do with it. Okay, so we have the action, five action uh, recommendation, and we have the, those two uh, definition. The thing is, if, if we look at this picture, then we say that, uh, you know, like the resources plus a, 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 an open license or a creative common license that I will be discussing later on, it equal to OER open educational resources. The thing is, uh, and the, the misunderstanding that's happening that, you know, people think one, that whenever we talk about open, edu open, of the term open, it means that open, it means free. No, open does not equal free. This is something we need to understand uh, uh, that open does not equal free. And I will discuss open, what open means, but free, it means no cost. But if we say free plus permission, this is equal to open. If, you, if, we, if we take the internet, now the, the problem that uh, we are facing that, you know, the internet is on whatever uh, on the internet, it's for free. You can go to YouTube, you can download videos, you can uh, uh, find resources. This is all, it's free. But it doesn't mean if it's free on the internet, it means I have the right, anything I find on the internet, I can take it, I can uh, do whatever I want to do with it. Okay, so that's why it's very important for us to distinguish between uh, 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 the term free and open. Free means no cost, 
open means free plus permission and we will uh, discuss this later on what, what uh, the, the, this picture here uh, the, before the open movement and before the oer and before we we on the on the right side of the picture we all are used to what what we call copyrighted material with uh, the c uh, circle with the circle and the c inside it it means the material is copyrighted and uh, uh, if if you want to use it or if you want to uh, whatever you need to ask permission from the author or the creator of this work and then if you violate uh, this copyright then you might be uh, you know the owner can take you to court maybe or whatever in the middle we have the open license and on the left we have the public domain so the solution and uh, as i said before you know the internet and uh, uh, and uh, we can uh, uh, it allows us to share, right? The internet, you know, sharing. And uh, for example, if I want to share something on the internet, uh, I, I can send it by email, I can post it and whatever. So the internet is enabling us to do things, but we are having a, a problem that, you know, the copyright laws that exist in all countries uh, 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 forbid us from uh, sharing those resources. So in the middle, there is something called the open license or the uh, uh, Creative Commons license. This is where uh, 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 this type of license, uh, we have different types as we'll see later on, uh, will uh, allow us to use those resources and share those resources without asking permission from the original. All we have to do is abide by the license and we are fine. And of course, you know, on the left, which is the most open resources that you find on the internet, any resource which is in the public domain. And, you know, to be in the public domain, for example, in the United States, uh, let's say if uh, there is a work for someone, uh, maybe after he dies, you, I think you have to wait about 70 years, uh, maybe or 80 years, so that his work or her work to be in the public domain. So uh, to, to, to solve the, you know, the issue, the, here we come with the open licenses. There is this... Uh, 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 organization which is called a non-profit organization, the Creative Commons organization. Uh, the mission of this uh, uh, organization uh, is uh, to help people legally share their knowledge. Well, what they have done simply, they have provided us with uh, six different type of licenses uh, uh, for the world to uh, be able to uh, uh, share uh, uh, resources uh, in a legal way. Okay, so this is a non-profit organization. Uh, mainly what they have done is they have created for us uh, uh, six type of licenses and this is what uh, those licenses are. The licenses that you see here, uh, those are the six licenses and those licenses are based on uh, four conditions. The four conditions that you see in each one of the licenses, the combination of those conditions make what we call the six uh, uh, CC licenses. The first uh, 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 condition that you see is the attribution, attribution by. It means, and this is the this symbol, you will see it on all the licenses. And if you look at the uh, licenses here, this is the by here, you see it in all six licenses. And what does attribution mean? It means uh, uh, you, you, we, we always have to give attribution to the creator of the work. Yani every single work we use, okay, we find on the internet or in databases or whatever, we need to give attribution to the creator or the original author of the work. The second one is share alike. Uh, this is another condition. Uh, uh, if you find it in a license, then we will have to, you know, this condition means if you take the work, do anything with it and re put, you know, re redistribute the work, then you have to use the same or abide by the same license. And you cannot change the license. You have to use the original license, which was uh, available when you downloaded the work or uh, uh, the resource. The non-commercial condition, it means if you see the symbol in a license, it means, you know, uh, you cannot make money out of this resource. And then the last one is the no derivative work, ND. It means uh, that you can take the work, you can use it as is, but you cannot make any derivative work. You cannot, for example, uh, build on a work. Yani for, uh, let's take an example. You cannot take a, a book, let's say, which has an open license and take this book and from this book make a play and use this uh, a play in the school or in the university. Here you're making derivative work 
of the original work. So combining those four conditions, it may, uh, uh, this is what makes the uh, six licenses that you see here. If I want to look at those licenses, I can see the first one, CC BY, okay, yani, this is the most open license. Uh, uh, second one, CC BY, share alike, CC BY, non-commercial, CC BY, non-commercial, share alike, and then CC BY, no derivative, CC BY, non-commercial, and non-derivative. Those are the six licenses. Now, that if we see now on, uh, uh, on the internet or on a resource, you know, that you know, uh, uh, we understand what each one of the licenses mean. I will have some examples later on to make it more uh, clear. So uh, we have two more icons that we, we need to, to know. Uh, the first one is the zero and the second one, they are the same. And when you see those icons, it means the resource is in the public domain, okay? Another thing about those licenses, uh, uh, that is uh, those licenses usually are uh, uh, also Creative Commons, you know, are in charge of uh, uh, the whole thing. Uh, uh, they are divided into uh, three layers. Those licenses, uh, which we call the Creative Commons licenses, are uh, uh, divided into three layers. The first layer, which we call the machine readable layer, okay? The second layer is the human readable layer, and the third level is the lawyer readable layer. What does uh, those layer, uh, what do they mean? A machine readable layer, for example, uh, how does, for if, if I'm trying to find uh, a, a resource on the internet using Google, okay, uh, we will see in the example, how does Google know that to return back results which are, for example, uh, uh, with a Creative Commons license? That's why there is a layer attached to each one of those licenses, which we call the machine readable. The human readable, this is what we have seen. And if you look at the license, or if you look at the, uh, the symbol or attached to the, uh, to the resource, or the license attached to the resource, then you as a human can read it. You understand what does it mean. And the last one is a lower readable layer. This is where uh, things get complicated if in case, you know, there is a court or something like that, then judges or uh, uh, court, they can uh, look at the uh, text behind each one of those licenses in case of uh, uh, dispute between uh, uh, people concerning uh, material or resources, if are open, not open or whatever, or infringement of copyright, stuff like that. So uh, uh, in this chart here, whenever we use the resources, uh, or we find resources and uh, they have an open license, that, that's easy, you know, you just read the license, abide by the license, and then you will be okay. You don't have to ask permission. All you have to do is just take the resource, uh, see what the license says, and then uh, abide by the license. Yeah, an ineligible license in Arabic, an ineligible license, we have no problem. And, uh, things get a little bit complicated, and this is, uh, we're not gonna discuss it here, but things will get more complicated when we try to, for example, uh, 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 find two resources and we want to mix them together. What type of license uh, on, uh, uh, we can mix together? And this chart here show us, you know, for example, uh, if you find a resource with, let's say, CC BY and another resource with another license, can I mix them together? Am I allowed to them uh, to do this? If I find two pictures, you know, that I want to mix them to make a new picture, can I do this, so on and so forth? This is what we call uh, remixing and adding, you know, two, two, two licenses from different uh, uh, sources. This is what we call the compatibility uh, chart. Uh, uh, the thing is that we mentioned before that, you know, always, always in all licenses, whenever you, uh, uh, you find a, a resource with an open license, all you have to do is give the attribution. You have to attribute, okay? So let's take an example about uh, uh, attribution. What is attribution and how do we attribute a resource that we find on the internet? First of all, in order to answer this question, we have uh, uh, to, whenever we find a resource, we have to first uh, check what is the type of the license, okay? Yani, once you look at the license, the CC license in general, and uh, you find the license, this license will tell you what you can do with this uh, uh, resource, okay? And second, we look if there, there are any attribution instruction. Sometimes, you know, you find resources and they will tell you, you know, the creator or the website or the blog or whatever, they will tell you how they want the resource to be attributed. So all you have to do is follow their instruction. And then the third thing and the most important is you need always to check 
if this resource that you find and you're using in your classroom, on your website, in uh, whatever, it has any uh, copyright notices attached to this resource. So once you find those, you know, then we gather the information. All you have to do is, all you have to do is follow uh, uh, this simple, what we call TASL, T-A-S-L, to write the attribution. Whenever we write an attribution uh, uh, about a, a, a specific resource or work, first of all, we put the title, what is the name of the material? Second, the author, who is the author? Okay, and if possible, you know, include a link, you know, let's say you find something on the internet uh, and you know uh, the author and the author has a link to a website or a blog, then it's very nice and important to put the link for the author and then uh, 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 the source or the URL, where did you find this resource? And then of course, you know, the uh, uh, last thing is the specific license. An example is if we look at this, an example here, for example, uh, if you look at the bottom here, you see that uh, uh, the title is uh, of this, let's say, resource is uh, nature. The author, the name of the author with the link where, where this picture is coming from. The source is coming from Flickr and the license, it's a CC license uh, 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 version 2. So this is what we call uh, the attribution thing. And we, you have to get used to uh, attributing the work. So, I repeat, if we find uh, uh, any resource on the internet with an open license, with a Creative Commons license, all I have to do is uh, use the license in the proper way, give the proper attribution, and here we go, I have no problem whatsoever because I am abiding by, by the license. Okay, let's take an example. This is an example, uh, if, if you see, for example, this is a picture on the internet on the left side, this is original work. It is a picture, it has a license, which is a public domain. Public domain, uh, if you don't want to attribute uh, uh, a resource or a picture or whatever, which is in the public domain, uh, you are free to, uh, to do so. But it is ethically, it's better if you always try and uh, uh, to put the attribution uh, of uh, the, the uh, original work that you find. Uh, and if you see on the, uh, if you look at the left side of the picture, original work, it's called Color for Sky in the Desert by the name of the author, is licensed under CC0. Okay, I took this work and made some derivative. I changed the color here on the, on the uh, right hand side. Okay, so it, it says Color for Sky in the Desert by Sasha is licensed under 2.0 slash contrast changed from original. I just put a note here that, you know, the contrast was changed. So this is a, 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 an example. Another example, if I find, let's say, another picture on the left side with a CC BY license. CC BY, it only, you only have to give attribution. No restriction whatsoever, except, you know, you have to give attribution. And I will repeat that attribution is always requested, uh, required on all uh, 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 work that we find uh, with an open license. On the left side, if I, uh, you know, I found this picture, I took it and I did some derivative work. What I've done is I have added, let's say, some uh, faces on this uh, picture, uh, you know, the donuts, you know. I took it, I found it, I modified it, then, then I have to attribute, you know, look at the attribution, how it works. This work, donut faces, is a derivative of donuts by fairy uh, whatever is licensed under CC BY. Now, the donut faces is licensed under CC BY by AC library. Then this is the new attribute, the new uh, 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 license, you know, like I attributed the original plus I added my own license on it, okay? And I'm allowed to do this because the license is a CC BY license. Where if, if you see, for example, CC BY share alike, this symbol here, a resource with this symbol. It means what? It means you can, you can take the, uh, the image, do whatever you want to do with it, make derivative work, change the color, add somebody uh, uh, on it. For example, in this picture, you see somebody is in the middle, uh, elephant. It has been modified. But the thing is that when you see the SA, the share alike, it means whenever you redistribute 
this picture or put it on the internet, you cannot change the license. You have to keep the original license as is. You cannot say, for example, this is CC by share alike non derivative. You cannot do this. Share alike, it means you have to, uh, to keep the original license and redistribute using the same license. This is another example. If you see uh, this license CC by non-commercial, it means automatically I can take the resource, I can do whatever I want to do with it, but I cannot make money out of it. For example, I cannot, let's say, find a picture of a bird, take this picture of this bird and print it on, a, on my ha on hat and, or t-shirt and uh, sell it for my student in the university or school. Here I'm making money off whatever resource I found or picture. But of course, you know, this is the non-commercial uh, 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 license. Another one is CC by non-commercial share alike. This is also, you can take the word, do whatever you want to do with it. Don't make money out of it. But uh, whenever you want to share it, you have to share it under the same condition or the same license. This is the CC by no derivative. And here, the CC by no derivative, this is an open license. This is a creative common license. But here for the, in the open education movement and visionaries and people in the open movement, they consider this is, uh, this is a, you know, a creative common license, but it's not whatever resource you find on the internet with this license, which has CC by no derivative, this is not an OER. And I'll explain later on when I talk about the five R's and the five P's in uh, five R's of David Wiley, you will understand more. Because they consider if you cannot take the resource and do anything with it, no derivative, it means don't do anything with the resource. Take it as is, use it as is. They don't consider it as on OER and they don't consider it an open education resources. And also this is another one, which is CC by non-commercial, no derivative. So when you see the symbol equal sign, no derivative, those are, yes, they are creative common license. They are open licenses, but they are the most closed license because you cannot do anything uh, or create derivative work or whatever, because the license forbids you from doing so. So th this is some examples of what we call the six creative common licenses. All right. Uh, any question, anything in the chat, Christina, because I don't see the chat. Mm. Or we will wait to that. Any question about the licenses? Uh, we can pause here for five minutes to get some question if there are any question before uh, we move on. Fazi, can I ask you a quick question? Because uh, I know that uh, you are showing, let's say, good practices and the, the, the real way to go for this. But is it compulsory? Just it's more a curiosity when you are uh, using, for example, uh, changing a resource uh, with an open license, is it compulsory to explain in the license all the changes that you have done, like you did, for example, for the faces or for the colors? Or is this just a good practice, but it's not compulsory? Well, uh, actually, uh, uh, you know, like uh, uh, you don't have to but uh, usually if you want a, a good practice, you know, uh, once you give the attribution and you buy it by, by the license, you can stop here. But wh what I said is, uh, uh, if you take this resource and you, for example, do any modification or you have done something to the license, you have to add your own license to it. Yes. Okay. So it's nice uh, 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 because maybe if the license allow you, you want to change, make it, maybe make it, uh, you find something CC by, you did something to it and you want to redistribute, but you want to put CC by a non-commercial. You can do this. You can add something. And it's a good practice to put your new license, you know, derivative work. This is a very important to put it. Um, you, you can do it or you cannot, but it's better to do it, of course. Okay, yeah. So it's uh, it's important. It's a good practice, but it's not legally compulsory. So compulsory. Yeah, it's not, it's not legally compulsory. Okay, That's thank, right. you. thank you. Okay, if no more question, let me uh, continue. All right, so this is uh, for the uh, creative and open licenses. Next, what I will talk about, I will talk about open education. What open education to get to the point where we talk about OER and what are the OER and what are the five R's of open. 
So when we talk about open education, you see people talking and you ask student or you ask other faculty member, what's open education? You know, you heard different terms of uh, uh, open education. Uh, 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 you know, you, you find different answers for open education. But you know, when we say open education in general, open education is a philosophy about, you know, how we produce uh, uh, resources, about how we share resources, how we build on the knowledge we have. And after all, you know, we do believe as educators that, you know, education without sharing, there is no education. And every day in our teaching, you know, what we do is we share uh, the knowledge we have with our students and our students share the knowledge uh, 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 with us. Okay, so uh, uh, open education is in general, it's a philosophy. And when we talk about open education, we're talking about resources, we're talking about tools, we're talking about practices, okay? that the, the whole thing is under the umbrella of what we call open uh, sharing, okay? And it's very important because, uh, uh, you know, when we talk about open education, the, the objective of open education is to scale up educational opportunities, okay? By taking the advantage of the power of the internet, okay? Before, uh, yes, let's say if I have a resource and this resource uh, is in a digital format, let's say, uh, I can put it somewhere, you know, and uh, or a book or a syllabus or whatever you want uh, using the internet. I can, and it's a digital resource. Maybe thousands and thousands and thousands of people can find my resource and can see and make use of my resource. In the past, you know, when you have a resource, you have a book. Once you have this physical book in your hand and you want to share it with somebody, you know, you have to give this book, it means one person at a time can use or make use of this book or this resource. But as I said, you know, with the internet, internet enables us of sharing, okay? Uh, as I said before, the copyright law prohibit us from sharing. That's where the open license came into the middle to solve this issue of uh, uh, sharing and open education. When we talk about open education terms, you know, we talk about open access, open data, open courseware, OER, open educational resources, open textbook, open pedagogy, uh, open science, open uh, assignment, you know, there are so many uh, terms of uh, which fall under op open education term. But you know, the thing that we need to know is when we say open, open education term, we're talking about freely accessible material and there are those material they have an open license attached to them. Um, as I said, you know, open access here, we're talking about a research article, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go through this, you, you can look at the, uh, the definition later on, we talk about open data here, we're talking about research data about uh, government and about ministries and stuff like that, that their data should be open on their websites, universities, let's say, open courseware, when we say open courseware here, we're talking about a complete uh, resources, which are a group uh, together, under one course, we call them uh, open courseware. And a good example is the MIT Open Courseware OCW initiative. And this is the oldest initiative concerning open courseware, where MIT decided to put all their courses, all the courses they teach at MIT, to put them uh, on the internet uh, 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 free and open for the whole world to make use of their courses. You know, uh, open textbook, you know, this is where you can find databases where you find a complete textbook of uh, open textbook and here this is we're talking about a, a, a traditional textbook very expensive textbook versus open textbook as uh, and as you will see in the in the video later on at the end of the presentation you see how much uh, at my university uh, how much we saved money on students and the cost of uh, textbook by using uh, open textbook and then open pedagogy here we're talking about this is a whole new world and a lot of uh, debate, a lot of discussion happening around open pedagogy, where you know, like uh, 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 the, the teachers uh, start engaging their students. It's not, you know, just I am the teacher, I'm sitting in the middle of the classroom, I am the boss, I have all the information, you listen to me, and then, you know, uh, you prepare for the exam, uh, you take the exam, I give you a grade, and that's it. No, here we're talking about different different approach, you know, where, you know, your students are engaged, you know, in the teaching learning uh, process. And, you know, they are also creator of information rather just simply 
uh, consume the information. So now I want to uh, 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 focus on the uh, term OER or open educational resources. I'm going to go back to this picture. We have to remember that open equal free, free it means no cost, plus the permission. The permission here we're talking about uh, uh, open uh, yeah, granting permission, granting permission, okay, to engage in what David Wiley called the five R's, okay. The, the granting permission happens through what we call the Creative Common License. Uh, uh, so you have this license attached to the resource to do what was it, to be enga to engage into what David Wiley called uh, the, uh, 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 the uh, five R's, okay, of openness. So, you know, according to Wiley, and a lot of people now are using it, so they're saying that, okay, it's not enough to, uh, 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 it's not enough to uh, find the resource, okay, uh, uh, to be an OER, to be an open content, you should be able to do those five R with the resource. The first R he talked about is to uh, be able to retain. Yani, we need to, uh, you find the resource, you should be able to download, let's say, the resource, to, to own this resource, uh, have a copy of this resource, he called it retain. He talked about the second uh, uh, R, which is reuse. You have, the, you have to have the right to use the content in a wide range of uh, format. I, you know, I find a PowerPoint, I wanna, uh, I wanna uh, use it in my classroom. Uh, I, I find a picture, I, I, and if it's an OER, uh, I, I should be able to put it on my website, on my blog, and so on and so forth. Uh, he talked about the third R, which is the revise, uh, the right to uh, adapt, adjust, modify, uh, uh, translate it into Arabic, translate it into Spanish, you know, this is what we call revise. Remixing, he talked about the fourth R, which is remix, that, you know, I found one resource, I found another resource, I should be able to remix those two resources and produce a new a product or a new resource, which we, uh, this uh, 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 thing we call it remixing. And of course, the last R, which is redistribute, I should have the right to, for example, to redistribute this work or derivative work I've done, you know, uh, uh, on the internet or with my student or with my colleagues or whatever. So th those are known as the five R. That's why, that's why, I will link it to the Creative Commons license. So according to Wiley, those are the five R's, okay? In, uh, according to Wiley and the community, open community, they're saying in order to be considered an OER, it should have those uh, five uh, essential elements. If we look at this picture now, that's why uh, uh, at the bottom of those licenses, if you see the CC BY no derivative, CC BY, no commercial, no derivative. Those two licenses here, according to the open movement, those are, this is a, a, an open license, it's true, but those two licenses, if you find a resource with such two licenses, they don't consider this resource as an OER. Why? Because you cannot, no derivative, it means you cannot uh, make any derivative work out of the way. Yani you cannot. Uh, for example, uh, uh, revise, you cannot remix, you, know, you cannot take resor two resources that they, they have, let's say, the equal sign and uh, combine them in one resource. That's why uh, uh, they don't consider them as uh, OER. Going up, you know, here, here we're talking about uh, uh, two licenses that allow you to, 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 uh, to share uh, non-commercially. Okay, the, we're talking here about less open, and then here, uh, uh, more open, more open until we get to the CC BY, which is, they consider it as the most open license, the CC BY. So if you find a resource with CC BY, this is the most open license uh, on this resource. But those two down here, okay, are not, uh, are not considered uh, uh, an OER. And of course, you know, at the bottom, bottom, if you find a resource with the C, which is a copyrighted resource, this is, of course, is not an open resource. This is in Arabic here, the five R's in Arabic. I will go quickly, uh, uh, you know, like the احتفاظ, إعادة الاستخدام, المراجعة, إعادة الدمج, وإعادة التوزيع. هود الخمس R اللي هن الترجمة تبعون باللغة العربية. And maybe you'll have a chance later on to look at the uh, definition of each one of those in uh, 
and Arabic. So when we say OER, what's not OER? If we, if we want to take an, uh, an example, some examples, you know, real life example, if we talk about full copyrighted resources uh, with a C, it, those are not OER. Uh, if, if uh, let's say at the university, uh, you have those subscription that you find at the library where the library or university pay money for those subscription, okay, those are not OER. Okay, you will have free access to the resources. You can uh, look at the resources because the university paid for those resources, but it doesn't mean if they are free, you can, uh, that it doesn't mean that they are open. Open, as we discuss it, you know, it, you should be able to engage uh, uh, or the user should be able to engage in the five R uh, activities. So, uh, 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 and the last one is open access resources. You know, usually also the open access journal and stuff like that in general, you have open access, you can go and find, look at the article, stuff like that. But it doesn't mean if they are free and you have open access, it means you can uh, uh, do anything or uh, uh, remix or uh, make derivative or, or so on and so forth. So those three examples that we don't consider as OER. And when we say OER, you know, a syllabus can be an OER, full course, books, images, homework, audio, video, all type. The only thing is, Whenever we say an OER, there should be an open license attached to this OER. And now, you know, looking at those licenses, you can uh, uh, read uh, the license and abide by the license and use whatever resource you find. Allah. Uh, I will give some example. Some examples, you know, for example, I want to find some resources. Uh, people, you know, usually go to Google. Now Google is part of the movement. If you go to Google advanced search, let me just go to Google advanced search and, and remember when we said at the beginning that, you know, each license has three layers. One of the layers is machine readable. You're looking, for example, here, let's say a periodic table. I'm looking for uh, a, a resource, but, you know, I went to Google advanced. And then uh, if you go down here at the bottom, 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 you see usage right, you know, the usage right here, you click on it, you're telling Google, please, find for me the periodic table, but you know, just return for me result, only results which uh, resources which are free to use and share. And then you click on advanced search. And then here you go, the resources that you will find. Okay, those are uh, uh, resources which have a, an open license attached to them. And this is why uh, uh, and how Google is part of this movement. Another example is uh, Flickr. The, in Flickr advanced search also you can find picture uh, and you say, well, I want a picture, I want to use a picture, which is uh, under an open license, you can define it here in uh, Flickr advanced search. Uh, um, uh, another example here is, you know, let's say uh, the Mason OER MetaFinder. This is the, uh, a, a, a search engine that that's a very important one. You can uh, take a look at it uh, later on, because whenever you're trying to find a resource, it will look for you for this resource in uh, 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 simultaneously in 21 different sources of open educational resources. And yani whatever you put in the, your search, uh, uh, search box, it will go and try to find this resource in open educational resources uh, 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 repositories, okay? It, it has 21 different sources where it try to find the information. Another example I'd like to give is the Internet Archive. I don't know how many of you have heard about the Internet Archive, but the Internet Archive, it's a very important uh, uh, place to go and visit. Uh, if you go to the Internet Archive, let me just uh, give a small intro about the Internet Archive. In the Internet Archive, uh, the, this is a huge library of archive material where you can find books, you can find videos, you can find audio, software, images, anything you want. And the way the Internet Archive started, it started by uh, uh, designing a, a, a machine, which they call it the Wayback Machine. I don't know if you've heard about it, but the Wayback Machine, this is one tool they have on their website. Let's say, you know, you want to check uh, a website, how uh, it used to be 10 years ago. Who knows how a website was 10 years ago. If you go and put the URL of the website in the Wayback Machine, it will give you a snapshot. Let's take, uh, for example, my university. Uh, I, I want to see how the website of my university, how it used to be. 
uh, okay, I will go to the Wayback Machine. What you will see now when you put the uh, URL of this uh, website, which is www.nu, any website you can put here, it will give you a snapshot and it will tell you uh, since, for example, 2000, 2001, 2003, 2004, they have uh, so many snapshots. I want to go back to 2005 and I would like to see, I click on 2005 and it will give you the snapshot by months here. You just take any date you want in August 22, let's say uh, uh, 2005. I want to see how the our university website, how it used to be. So it will take you back and it will show you now, of course, it's not our website. Huh? Huh? And it will take you to the website and it will show you how uh, uh, the website was. For example, tentative final exam schedule fall 2005. And I can click on this one and I can see what where the courses offer, what final exam and stuff like that. This is sorry, what sorry we, for interrupting. Uh, yes. We still see your slides. <clears throat> we do not see the um, your browser. We just see the the PowerPoint. Ah, you don't see? Ah, sorry. Ah, you didn't. Uh, ah, you, you, you. So I, I'm going to let me just uh, go back. All right. So uh, let me share here. Because I was sharing the, uh, the only the PowerPoint, okay. I want to share the uh, uh, screen. All right, let me change the sharing thing. Okay, let me just now you can just one second. Let me know if uh, now can you see the yes now yes okay. thank you. All right, sorry about that. All right, so. Uh, uh, this is the Internet Archive. I was saying that this is a very important website where, you know, they have this Wayback Machine at the top here. You just put the name of, I will repeat, any website uh, that you want to see the history of it, www.nu.edu.lb, and then you click Enter here. It's called the Wayback Machine, and it will give you a snapshot of the years. One, because it takes snapshot, you know, they have tools, take snapshot of all uh, websites in the world. And then it will tell you since when they have the snapshot. And then you can click on the year. Let's say I want to look at 2005 to see how my university website, how it used to be. And then you pick up the date and you can go to the date and it will show you exactly how was your website back then. Okay. This is a, a very nice tool, uh, which is uh, openly available for people to use on the Internet Archive. This is our website uh, back in 2005, okay? And uh, let me go back to uh, uh, the thing. Another thing is about books here. There is uh, in the Internet Archive, they have a huge library of books and it's called the Open Library Book. If you click on it here, my advice to you, if you go and uh, and uh, uh, create an account on the Internet Archive. It's free. Uh, create a username and a password and that's it. Because whenever you go to their open library and you wanna, uh, you, you can uh, log in, for example, uh, 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 let me just log in. And it will, uh, it will uh, keep track of your, or all the books, wrong password. I think it's wrong. I, I forget my password maybe. Oh no, here we go. So here, this is, it will uh, keep track of the books that you have borrowed. But the thing is, let's say uh, you are in the open library and you're looking for a book. Maybe you don't find it anywhere. Try to find it and it, you will find it on uh, the internet. Let's say I'm looking uh, uh, for a book about Italy or whatever. I'm going to say Italy and it tell me I, ha I found for you 20,000 hits of books talking about Italy. And they have maybe books, let's say this is a book which is first published in 1869, where you can read the book, Handbook for Travelers. Let's go to this book, let's say. Very nice library, and it's open and it's free, all right? And then what they have, they have this viewer, and you'll see the book here. Down there, it's 458 pages. You can flip the pages, you can read the book, okay? And then, moreover, they have... Uh, uh, accessibility feature, which if you want to listen to the, you don't want to read it uh, or you cannot read or whatever, you can uh, read the book. And 16 will... locomotion, 7 locomotion, railways, 
With regard to the rapid advance of this modern essential of civilization, the remarks already made, P. So here, you know, it, it will read the book for you. And uh, this, is, uh, this is a very nice place to go and uh, find uh, uh, openly, uh, 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 res open resources and materials and stuff like that. If, uh, if you go to videos, for example, this is the books. If you go to videos, what they have, they have uh, a place which we call it, uh, they call it TV news. And what they have done is they have archived since 2009 uh, around 80 station, TV station, uh, all their programs. And yani for example, let's say you're giving your student uh, uh, a project about, you know, let's say uh, Beirut, Lebanon, how the media is covering Beirut, Lebanon. Well, you know, and you tell your student go and uh, write a paper about it and they want to find place. You can show them to go to the internet archive, to the TV, thing and for example here you can search let's say uh, Beirut uh, Lebanon let's say I'm looking for Beirut Lebanon and it's all free and open as we mentioned and they have of course advanced search you click go and it's a huge website and we need three hours if you want to go into details on this website but I just wanted you to, uh, uh, to, to, to have a feel about the internet archive here, what it gives you, it gives you all the stations, all the programs, okay, where you have Beirut, Lebanon. If you look under here, one of those spokes, Kaza Kaza, it's in 2017. On the left side, you can filter, okay, you can filter by station. You want to see, well, those are the, the stations which are uh, being archived and scanned 24 over 7 so far. You can just say, I want CNN or I want whatever, Al Jazeera or whatever, what they're talking about a specific topic. And the thing is, if, if, you, if you go to, uh, uh, to the program, any program here that has Beirut, Lebanon, and you click on it, it will take you, the, the thing is, it will take you to the program, for, for example, and the name of the program and the spot and the slot where they talk about Beirut, Lebanon, and you can, you can listen to it. You see, it's August 4, 2020 at 10 p.m., and you can listen to uh, the clip of uh, uh, what they said about Beirut, Lebanon, or any topic you're trying to uh, research. So this is, uh, this is the Internet Archive. Of course, you know, if you're looking for an audio, audio that you don't find anywhere, you might find it on the Internet. Uh, they have software uh, archive, archive about software, and of course they have a huge library of images, uh, 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 which is also uh, available on the internet. I have visited the internet archive, they are in San Francisco, and we, I met the, the, the person who's behind this the project, it's a huge project, beautiful project, uh, uh, and I advise you to go and look at the internet archive, okay? So, uh, going, uh, let's move on. Let me see what the other examples. So there are so many examples. Uh, Creative Commons. Uh, Creative Commons is a, it's a, it's a very. Uh, just one second. Uh, the Creative Commons is uh, is another important. Uh, Uh, website to go and uh, look at the the Creative Common website. Uh, Creative Common also it's a very important website for you to go and look at. Uh, the OER Commons also it is a, a a place where you find OER and the OER Commons it's very important. Why? Let me just uh, show you the OER Common. Uh, the thing is with the OER Commons, you know. You can find any resource, any OER, you know, you just look uh, subject, what subject you uh, under which subject. They have a lot of metadata involved here, which education level, okay? And then you find the OER. The thing is they have also authoring tool if you wanna create your own OER, you know? Uh, but this is of course beyond this uh, webinar and this presentation. But another thing is now they have on the top here, uh, the hubs and the hubs here, they have uh, a hub for the all Arab countries, for example. They have UNESCO hub on it, where you can join. For example, if you go to Alexo uh, OER hub, you will find, okay, all the uh, uh, 22 member Arab state, where they, each one of those, you know, 
uh, uh, they can share resources. You can go to any one of those, see who's in this uh, uh, hub and what resources they have shared, so on and so forth. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of material shared under uh, uh, OER Commons for, uh, uh, for the uh, Middle East and uh, this region. But you know, things hopefully in the future will have because it's much needed to find uh, the OER resources uh, in Arabic. We don't have, you know, uh, but so this is the OER Commons, let's say this is Lebanon. And Lebanon, uh, it will show you who are the members, 29 members, what are the resources which are shared under uh, 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 each one of those hubs. So this is the OER common. This is another uh, 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 a place to, to look for OER. Of course, there is the Merlot. Merlot is a huge digital repository of OER resources, which are all peer-reviewed resources. And you find excellent resources under Merlot. The MIT, of course, Open Courseware. If you're looking for a course, uh, you go to OCW of M MIT. And then here, uh, all, all uh, the slides, they have links. You, it, they will take you later on to uh, the, you know, where you can find those resources. You have, if you're looking for an open book, open textbook, you, the, a good place to look is OpenStax. And then, of course, Deeper Text is another place for open textbook. BC Campus, they have a huge collection of open textbooks with authoring tools and stuff like that. And uh, of course, uh, open access directory and open data, open science. And uh, if we will have time, we can go back to uh, and look at some of those examples. But let me just uh, finally, because maybe we will not have a lot of time, talk about, you know, like uh, uh, OER advocacy and promotion. The, the, the model that I have used here, it's a, it's a a simple model, you know, I started with uh, uh, awareness and capacity building since I came back from the United States because uh, I, I visited the United States part of a program which is called the Open Book Project back then in 2014. And to, to understand more the open movement and to understand more what's happening in this uh, world of OER and stuff like that. So I came back to Lebanon. And, you know, I started doing, you know, awareness campaign, capacity building for faculty members, you know, then, you know, for senior leader at the university, for the president, for the dean, you know, this is a very important stuff. And this is, is well aligned. This is what I've been doing is well aligned with the action plan of UNESCO, where, you know, they're saying in the first action plan, they talk about, you know, awareness campaigns, capacity building, and so on and so forth for how to find OER, what's OER, stuff like that. Second uh, thing is uh, you need to involve the university community. That's why, you know, uh, uh, I did a lot of training uh, workshop for faculty member, for staff. Uh, uh, I was asked by faculty member to come to their classes, graduate class, undergrad, to give their student, you know, uh, a talk about uh, OER and Creative Commons license. And of course, the library, uh, staff, they play a very important role in, in uh, the, the world of OER and open education because this is, uh, that's why they need to be trained and they need to be involved in this uh, movement of openness. Second, I started with a pilot project and this pilot project, you know, was in the Faculty of Humanities at my university where we took, uh, I trained the faculty member who teach English uh, courses Okay, how to find OER, how to create OER, how to mix OER, how to use the open license, so on and so forth. And now we have so many sections with so many students in the humanities where students, day one, they don't use a traditional textbook anymore because their faculty member or their instructor, they use open educational resources and they use open textbook. And then from here, I moved to, I expanded the scope of OER adoption, moving to other faculties. Now we have faculty of science, where you see a lot of math professors are using open textbook in mathematics, in physics, in chemistry, where students don't have to buy their uh, traditional textbook, expensive textbook, $100, $50, $200 sometimes the cost of the book. And then, of course, this loop will continue in awareness and capacity building. And some of the some of the uh, lesson learned supporting OER. What I have learned, first of all, from my experience, and you know, the instructor I work with, the thing is that you know, the instructor and the faculty members they must be convinced about the benefits of OER. 
you have to show them or the person or the champions in, uh, in institution, you have to convince faculty members that, you know, what are the benefits of OER? Okay, there are benefits, you know, because it's beyond this webinar, but there are a lot of benefits for students because, you know, reducing the cost for students, but they have to know, faculty members, they have to know what's the benefit for me as a faculty member. And here we talk about, you know, like, uh, 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 teaching and learning here, you're talking about, you know, you don't go, uh, you have this traditional book, it means you are teaching the book instead of teaching with the book, you can uh, create your own resources, you can mix and remix resources, okay, so on and so forth, you can share the resources, you know, you'll be exposed to other colleagues in the world, okay, there are so many benefits for faculty members also, and they have to, you have to, 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 to convince them about those benefits so that uh, before they start using OER. Another thing is that they ask about the quality of OER. Of course, you know, if they go to the internet and say, well, try to find things, they will say it's low quality. But some of the examples I gave you now, for example, Merlot and OER Commons and stuff, they have uh, excellent uh, quality reviewed uh, resources that people, but you know, you have to train faculty members how to use those resources, how to create their own textbook, how to create their uh, uh, resources, how to mix their resources, so on and so forth. Another thing, you know, we've done is the collaboration, especially in courses where they teach the same section, English uh, section A, English section B, section C. It's very good, you know, so, uh, to make people, you know, create a community of practice, you know, so that, you know, people will share best practices between, uh, between each other. And of course, you know, uh, uh, instructor need the right tools and the training and about, for example, if you tell them about OER commons, you know, the example I gave you, the OER commons, you know, maybe they need about maybe between six and 10 hours before they can, uh, uh, not just finding OER, but, you know, creating their own OER, you know, because on the OER commons, let's say, and Merlot and all those websites or Libertech, they have authoring tool and in order for them to use those authoring tool, you need to offer them the appropriate uh, training. All right. Uh, um, the, the last thing is that, you know, supporting the OER adoption and advocating for OER in campuses and in universities is not, it is a difficult task. Uh, you have, uh, you know, uh, you can do it. It's not impossible. And we need to do it, especially in this area of this world, which is the Middle East and, you know, South Mediterranean uh, countries. Uh, a recommendation for institution. Uh, this is what I've done. First of all, the OER now, it's, you know, because the leadership were, uh, were, uh, uh, of the university were, uh, 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 were convinced about the OER now, uh, it is in our strategic uh, 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 in the strategic plan of the university. So OER is in the strategic plan. Uh, a committee, a, an OER committee was formed. I'm chairing this committee to work on the policy. Now we have a draft policy at the university level and the policy is a very important document to be established at the university level or at the national level, okay? Uh, another thing is, you know, uh, you, there should be a reward system somehow somewhere in the university for faculty member for example if you are a faculty member and you are willing to 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 uh, change your course from traditional to uh, openly uh, licensed and open resources uh, course the faculty member need time and uh, because it needs time to be prepared maybe the senior leadership will say okay you're teaching three courses teach two courses this semester and work on your oer course okay strategy is important Okay, so on and so forth. So uh, uh, there are a lot of recommendation for uh, institution, a lot of recommendation for faculty member, and of course there are a lot of recommendation when we talk about OER at the institution for champion people who are championing uh, this project. In few, uh, our future direction, um, uh, we would like to share uh, our Lebanon OER initiative uh, in Lebanon with other universities at the national level and of course at the regional level. Uh, we're trying to launch a research mechanism for the area also. And we, of course, we're going to continue our advocacy for OER to reach its full transformative potential for supporting the SDG4. And uh, uh, this is, uh, if you click on this link, this is the Lebanon OER initiative. This is a website that I'm managing uh, myself. 
it has a, a, a lot of stuff in it and the most important it has some resources in Arabic and if you click on this one it will take you to OER Lebanon and last before we move on to the discussion let me allow me to show you this small video it's a two three minutes less than three minute video about the initiative at our university and it will give you a good idea where we are and what we have done uh, so far thank you very much let's just watch the video may i uh, play the video christina um two yeah. minutes yes yes okay it's fine otherwise oh. you can also share the link uh, the link is here, you know, it's on YouTube. Okay, but, okay, go, go. And then I would like to have a bit of time for... Uh, uh, discussion, okay. So right. uh, maybe later on they can uh, look at the... At the, at the I mean, is, so, is the video on YouTube or somewhere where we yeah, can it watch is, it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I will, if you click on this one, just one second. Uh, it's on YouTube, yes. It is on YouTube. Okay. Open education resources are teaching and learning materials that you may freely and openly use and reuse without charge. With the launch of the UNESCO OER Chair for Lebanon and the MENA region, NDU joins the ranks of fewer than 10 other institutions worldwide with similarly appointed... Okay, so I'm going to stop here. Maybe later on you can look at it and we'll open the, the floor for, uh, uh, for any discussion. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much for sharing all the things that you are doing at the university as a champion and uh, also all the tools. I have to say that I've been to the Internet Archive and I've seen the UNIMED website 15 years ago and it was embarrassing. Do you have any questions or comments or would you like to share what you at your university are doing for fostering openness in education? Pat. Thank you very much. Uh, the conference has been really interesting. So congratulations. Um, I would like to ask about the, the law. I don't know if uh, in Europe or in any other countries uh, we have a similar law than in Spain, because in Spain uh, our law about uh, intellectual property of resources have some excep exceptions. In the field of education, we can use some resources with copyright but uh, we must uh, cite the authors and we cannot use the complete, uh, for example, the complete uh, book, but we can use some pages of the book uh, and we must cite the authors, but it's possible to do this in education with music, with films, with, uh, view, with books. And I don't know if uh, perhaps in other countries is the same with the copyright in the in the field of education. We can use this type of resources with copyright. I would like to know because in the university we we use a lot of resources with copyright, but not the 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 full resource. We only use a part of this resource. Yeah. Uh... You, uh, you want me to answer, Christina? Or, uh, well, I, I, uh, or you would like to answer? But in Italy, it, it's the same. Oh. Uh, there is a maximum amount that you can, that you can use. Um, but I think that maybe, Fazi, you want to detail a little bit more between this um, thing that it is possible to do for the law and, and yeah. the CC licensed uh, materials. Yeah, the, this is uh, uh, the thing is, uh, let, let me, let, let's agree on one thing that the copyright, as, as I said, you know, I, as I showed in one of the uh, uh, slides, the copyright, okay, the copyrighted material, you know, uh, uh, if you want to use it, you know, you have to be very careful with it, you know, you don't want to infringe and if you want to, you have to ask permission and, and, and all this complication. And this is where open comes in the middle, you know, I show you, you know, copyright, open license and the the open license thing, and this is something it was proved, you know, especially in the COVID and, you know, what happened is, you know, like 
uh, people, you, you know, uh, especially in universities and school, hiding behind the walls, you know, they used to copy and paste and they are showing them to their students, they had no problem. But with the pandemic and with the online teaching and learning, people, they wanted the resources, they were scared about violating copyright law because, you know, everybody is watching. So this is where the OER thing and open resources came into play and it showed to be very important for faculty members. Because from my experience, when I give training for a school teacher and university teacher about OER, where they can find them, how to use the license, you know, once you know you find an OER or a resource, a course, a book, anything, you know, with an open license and you abide by the license, you, you have no problem with the copyright law. The copyright is still with the author, as I said. Whenever we talk about open license, it doesn't mean you know, that you know, I have a book that I wrote and I have an open license on it. I decided how I want to share this book with the entire world. If I have a syllabus, I am the owner of the syllabus. I decided to share it with Christina and with the, with the team here uh, with an open license. All you have to do is take this resource and abide by the license. The, the, the fair use thing is something very complicated because in education say, well, you take uh, that amount of uh, uh, this book or whatever and use it, you have no problem. But if you look at the business cases that, you know, a lot of, lot of problem with this uh, fair use thing. And it's very, uh, it's not black, it's not white, it's in the middle, you know, people don't understand how much is fair use and stuff like that. So that's why the open, open thing is a very important thing for our faculty member. Uh, to know and uh, talk about and uh, and uh, Unimed are playing are doing a lot of work in this area yani Fabio and Christina and a lot of you know and uh, uh, you know they're doing a lot of things with uh, open OER and uh, stuff like that I see in the chat you know a lot of people are asking for the presentation I will uh, send it to Christina and Christina will post it on the uh, I don't know. Uh, okay, yes, yes, we are using a Padlet thing, okay, but so, I will share also right. by, okay, by, okay. by mail. Okay, because I had some, uh, you know, like uh, colleagues asking for, for it, you know. Okay. Yeah. Thank uh, you. And uh, about the, the suggestion that you are doing, uh, my question was in relation to the difficulties that we have in the university to share sometimes to share our books and our articles because, because the, the property is from the editorial of the book or the, the journals that we have to pay to publish. So perhaps it's possible to share in uh, as uh, open educational resources uh, open a part of this resource. For example, not a full book, but we can share perhaps uh, one chapter or one part of the book in, in open access on internet yeah. because the property is not mine, it's the yeah. editor. University. Yes, or the university. Uh, yes. And that's why, uh, that's why I said, you know, like uh, uh, in my recommendation for institution, that's why I said the policy at the institution level, it's very important, why? Because a faculty member and, you know, get confused between, you know, between the policy uh, which exist in uh, institution concerning copyright and who owns, uh, yes. you know, you write a chapter, is it you own it or it's owned by the, the university? university or the editor of the right. books? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's everywhere, you know, Paz, don't worry. That's why the policy, whenever there is a policy, uh, uh, it's a very important step to do at the institution level. And that's why it's one in one of my recommendations to have a policy at the institution level, because it will be much clearer for faculty member and professor, you know, if there is a policy, of course. Thank you. Uh, unless Fabio you want to say something, I don't know about this, Fabio. No, no, just to, just to confirm it. I mean, uh, having an institutional policy is a, is a milestone. Uh, there are many around yeah. Europe, around the world. I'm, I can think of the one of the University of Edinburgh that has been used by many as a, as a blueprint. It's a very nice one. And apart from the policy, another important thing is to invest uh, in some support uh, uh, for professors, like you are doing at uh, your university, again, uh, citing the, the Scottish uh, University of Edinburgh. They have uh, an, an office, a couple of persons who are working just to support uh, the development of OER and the development of, comp of open education competences among uh, staff. 
and not only also to, to create uh, what I call them openness connection. For example, they are working with the Museum of Edinburgh in order to use uh, some re digital resources of the museum as teaching resources following an open licensing process. So it's not, let's say the policy is fundamental, but then it's also important, I think, to put in place some support, uh, some support staff, some support services for staff, because as you say, I mean, professors uh, might be, let's say, scared, or maybe they don't have time for this. It's all pretty easy, but it, it needs time, as, as you were saying before, and, uh, and, and some commitment. So having somebody there to support you is also very important, I think. Yeah. Well... If I may, I also have a question, uh, which is a question for, for everyone, and is about um, um, the work UNIMED is doing. As you have mentioned before, UNIMED um, has been fostering the adoption of open educational resources a lot in the region. Uh, I am personally an OER enthusiast. Uh, we are conducting trainings on the use of open educational resources also. Um, with Fazi in, in Libya and other countries. Uh, now we have done some conversations within uh, UNIMED about the accreditation of uh, open educational resources and OER based courses. And uh, this is a, an idea which came from Fabio initially, but then uh, we have discussed this with, with the board of directors to see if and how it would be at all possible to um, set up a kind of network within the region for the accreditation of open educational resources um, offered by different universities. So this could be like full courses or, or short micro-credential um, opportunities. Uh, we are still really just discussing uh, the concept. Uh, as you may know, there is this large initiative um, called OERU, which is a really extraordinary initiative where different universities join this network offering courses which are open and free and students enroll to the, well, and students, they just take uh, those courses which are mutually recognized by the different universities within the network. So this is not like an easy initiative, but I just wanted uh, maybe Fabio to elaborate more if you have something to, to say and to also know what you think about this initiative and if and how we could move ahead. Yeah, ju just, just to add <clears throat> one thing on this, imagine the, the, the big difference is to, is to go from a, a, a situation where you have normal universities in terms of copyright, in terms of policies, with some professors in it, in the, these universities who are adopting open educational resources because they believe in the thing and so on, to a situation where the university is committing to open education and it's deciding, for example, to work together with other universities and the FASIS university would be for sure a very important actor in this because you are advanced in this to work together so that the student from the university or also from outside the university can take some courses by these universities the different universities, and then get somehow accredited even if these courses have been delivered through open educational resources so this is a bit the scheme of the OERU from New Zealand that Christina was mentioning before so it is a big change because it brings accreditation into the, into the system because many of the things that Fazi have said are, for example, MOOCs, uh, these massive open online courses are used by individuals. It's very difficult for an individual to take a degree or take a master just through MOOCs or through open educational resources, but it's not impossible. I mean, these people from the OERU are doing it and they have now the first uh, graduates from some masters uh, who have been using only open educational resources. So the problem there is, is not the availability of the resources, it's mostly the agreement among the universities who would work on this. And this is an idea 
which apart from being useful for the students, uh, I don't know, Fazio, what do you think, but it would be good also to really show in the region, let's say, and the world that it is possible to, to deliver a full experience based on, on open approaches, not just uh, you know, mini courses and mini, mini activities. So this would be the, this is the idea, but of course uh, it's an idea that can fly only if, we, if uh, there are enough universities who say, okay, let's try this, let's try to agree on this. And as, as Christina was saying, this is under discussion now in, within UNIMED, it's not easy, but uh, it's something that uh, would give a strong sign of, uh, let's say, strong of pushing from the Mediterranean region, south and north, I would say. Well, I don't know, is, since today we are talking about OER, we would like to know what you think, if you think this is crazy, if you think this is feasible, if rectors will say, oh, no, no, please, this will be impossible. What do you think? I know it comes new to most of you, so we don't have to commit to anything, but just to say if this is something that you 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 would see possible. From a perspective of a recent student, let's say, because uh, I don't know really about what the ministry or what the universities will think. I think it's a great idea, especially if you are, um, especially for the for the current times, as Christina and as you, Fabio, mentioned, the MOOCs are great, but to enroll in a second master degree or to prepare yourself for a PhD and it's totally uh, uh, online with, uh, with an open resource, I personally think it would be great. I'll give you an example. Um, for example, I had a professional master degree and uh, in Tunisia, it's not possible to proceed the PhD with a professional master's degree. So if you want to enroll uh, for, for a future, in the future for a PhD, you need to have a research master's. So if it's an online uh, and you have a full, uh, you have a full course online, I think it will facilitate a lot uh, of, uh, of, of, of the work in the future. And if you want to enroll in a professional life at a certain age, I personally think it will be a great idea and it will give access for, for students for, uh, to elaborate more for, for their future and to have more chances. So I personally think it's also feasible because the new generation are willing to do so. And uh, with, with the last year and this year, we've seen that everything is possible and the online education, it's, um, I think it will be the new norm for the future. So we're, we, we need to take a step to, to, uh, to encourage this. I think another problem it's about the language because in Italy students like to have something in Italian language. So I think it will be nice to have some textbook for open access, but it was in a different language. So to translate, to work together, so to have something in Italian because it's very difficult to, as you say, to have a student accept to study in the English language. Yeah, of course, language is also a, is also a big issue. Right? It's, uh, at the moment, we were thinking of uh, of this possibility in in subjects uh, which uh, see English as a natural uh, language. Uh, and for example, this uh, this is not a problem for the OERU because they all speak English. But even there, they started from business studies. I think because it's something very transversal with curricula pretty similar everywhere. But that, that's that's an issue for sure. Absolutely. I don't know, Fazi, what do you think about the idea as a, as a UNESCO chair on, on OER? I think you're muted. I don't know what happened with my uh, sound system. I couldn't really hear uh, the last thing what was happening, but now, can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Hey, uh, uh, I, I couldn't really hear what uh, was the thing late. Fabio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the we were the question. Just, yeah, we were just presenting a maybe crazy idea or at least futuristic idea we had within UNIMED, that is the idea of creating a network of universities in the around the Mediterranean that can uh, that can decide to uh, share some OER based courses and then. Uh, 
agree that a student from the universities or from outside universities as well can enroll in one universities of, of, the, of the group, take some of the courses also by others and somehow get those accredited, therefore uh, lowering down the cost because these will all be OER and especially pushing a lot for more OER culture within, uh, within the region. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, this is a great idea and this is much needed, uh, Fabio. And this is what actually a lot of uh, uh, people, you know, are doing. But the thing is, uh, the, the culture of sharing, this is what, you know, what we need, you know, to start with. Especially, you know, I, I'm, I'm talking from a Middle Eastern uh, culture, let's say. Let's take my university, let's take, you know, in Lebanon. I don't want to talk about other, you know, people are not used to share, you know, they are afraid to share. You know, they want, you know, they, they want to keep things for themselves. But, you know, the thing is, at least at my institution, Fabio, and from my experience, you know, because people now know, I mean, what are you hiding? You know, it's, the, the whole thing is moving in this or this direction. When you show them what's happening worldwide, you know, how people are sharing their work, you know, uh, how important for them when, you know, if you have something and you take something from somebody else and you redistribute, you know, using an, you know, you will be exposed to other colleagues, you know, you can build, you know, you build on somebody's work and somebody else build on your work, so on. So you have to, you have to, 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 to teach faculty members about this, you know, to help them overcome before. Uh, it's it's not impossible what you're saying, but you know it needs a lot of work, uh, really, Fabio. This is what you're saying, uh, you know, especially uh, you know when it comes to different universities, different policies, accreditation, not accreditation. It's a little bit complicated. It's not impossible, but it can be done. Of course, if there is what we call uh, a chef d'orchestre about this, let's say Unimed uh, uh, chef d'orchestre for this initiative, and uh, I think it will be a great. Uh, idea. Maybe you start with one, two your universities and then, you know, you know, more universities. I don't know. But this is something, it's a great idea, I, I believe. I may, Fabio? Sure, sure. Uh, I think that's, that's a great idea. Of course, I see uh, everything that the colleagues have been mentioning and about the difficulties of implementing um, I'm not so sure here about the reality in Evora and Portugal. I'm not so sure about people being um, afraid or not very keen on sharing. I'm uh, more worried and actually we had already had a meeting with Marcello, uh, me and the vice rector. We presented sort of an idea of a, a course on Mediterranean studies who uh, could potentially be shared among different universities. The question here is not making the materials available freely. I think the universities would uh, not pose a question to that, but it would be more like how can we accredit it uh, between universities in different countries? Um, joint accreditations are always complicated, even if uh, within the same country, but between countries might be even more complicated. And if we are talking about, and I think that's the idea, about European and non-European countries, we might have additional um, difficulties here. But also we should have at the final, and that will be the main question to the rectors, I think, is that um, for the students to get a diploma, of course, they can do uh, all the, the studies online, but for them to get a diploma, a final accreditation, a paper that they have to show, they will have to pay a small amount. Of course, it will never be the same amount as if they were going to uh, physical face-to-face uh, -face, uh, classes. So it will be uh, an easier way and uh, also um, um, less exp um, expensive way for the students to be able to get to these uh, materials. I think the question will not be the sharing, will be how we will be able to accredit such a thing and to, uh, well, to get this done between different countries, I think. Thank you. Can I, can I just also add something here? I, I, I just uh, managed to use the video uh, and show my face. Um, I come from Cyprus, uh, which is in a very interesting position because we are member, full member of the European Union. But at the same time, we are geographically and uh, in many respects culturally in the Middle East. 
the, the, the shortest international flight from Cyprus is not, for instance, to Greece, uh, but it is actually to Lebanon. I think the flight to Beirut is the only international flight I've been to where the seat, fast and your seatbelt sign never goes off because by the time the plane goes up, it goes down. Uh, so we are, um, so I'm in a position, and I have the, I have had uh, quite a few projects with Middle East partners. So I'm very much uh, enthusiastic and uh, sympathetic uh, to issues of the Middle East. But uh, along uh, what Marta just said, I think that sharing is the easiest uh, of the aspects of this uh, idea. Um, there is so, there is the issue of uh, accreditation, as Marta said. As members of the European Union, uh, we work around the EQF system, uh, the European Qualification Framework, and, uh, and around uh, accreditation mechanisms that are effectively um, uh, directed in Brussels. And uh, the other thing is quality control. Just because you share material doesn't mean that the material is up to the quality uh, that the others want. Uh, and who is going to do the quality control? Um, there is also the issue of relevance, meaning that I teach a course, I'm more than happy to share my material, uh, but it doesn't mean that the rest of my colleagues uh, who are teaching a similar course are using the same syllabus uh, or the same um, uh, approach, uh, philosophical approach in presenting the material. Um, but even if this can be somehow overcome, I think the issue of quality, which goes hand, uh, hand to hand with the issue of accreditation, is very important because if some um, independent mechanism uh, does not uh, uh, does not um, certify the quality of my material, then somebody else who is using this material may not be able to get accreditation because my course will not have been uh, certified uh, to an acceptable level of quality. So um, the individual um, wish uh, of us to help humanity and, my, and our colleagues and our international uh, scientific community to share our material, I think that's the, the easiest of the issues. There are other issues that they need uh, to be uh, addressed. And there are central mechanisms in let's say in the Mediterranean universities, if I can use that expression, there are central mechanisms and entities that need to be established and used in order to uh, create some kind of normalization of the whole process so that uh, it will be meaningful to talk about uh, sharing resources between different universities that are established in uh, different countries. Thank you. Mm, all, all good points indeed. I also agree that perhaps sharing as such um, is not the most difficult thing. Perhaps we still need a change in the mindset or yeah, raising awareness on the benefits, but then when it comes to accreditation and comparing all the different systems, this can be, yeah, there may be many levels, many levels of complexity. The thing that we in Europe now are seeing those European university initiatives working on those type of structures. And, and I know Marcello and Junimed also advocating for a type of pilot initiative in the Mediterranean region for a Euro-Mediterranean university initiative. So there may be opportunities for discussing all those mechanisms for setting up a new governance mechanism for accreditation. And I agree that also the assessment is, and the quality mm -hmm. are things that needs to be uh, discussed within all the participants. And also building capacity for educators to create contents which can be used and accessible for everyone is another important point of this ide ideal initiative. So yes, things we can we can discuss a lot about. Um, maybe I'm not sure if the Erasmus Plus program is um, the ideal program to support this initial um, 
type of activities, but maybe we can look into it. Christina, I, I was actually, I was, you, you, you just stole my, my words from my mouth. I was just going to mention Erasmus Plus. In the previous program, in the previous Erasmus Plus program, uh, there was in key action too, there were those projects called capacity building, uh, where the idea was to create at the higher education level, at the university level, to create um, programs of study that would be mutually recognizable between a number of countries. And actually it was a great opportunity. The whole idea of the project was to, uh, to pass know-how from the European countries to non-European ones. And uh, the non-European countries in Erasmus+, Plus, what they were called the, the partner countries, okay. were actually uh, split into a number of geographical groups. And of course, one group was Middle East and North Africa. And uh, I, I've been involved, uh, actually I am involved in two of these projects already from the previous program. And actually I have been an evaluator uh, in Brussels for this program. What is interesting, however, is that this capacity building part of uh, Erasmus Plus has changed dramatically in the new Erasmus Plus program, uh, 21 to 27. And uh, you will notice that although they, they still mention capacity building, right now, at least for this first call, I don't know if it's going to change later, but for the first year of the new program, they are concentrating on informal and non-formal education of youth. Uh, so they are moving away from uh, higher education institutions. Uh, I don't know if they feel that the previous program has uh, served its purpose, uh, but right now um, in Erasmus Plus, the trend, at least for the first course of 2021, and you can see the Erasmus Plus uh, guide on the website, um, they are referring uh, only to informal and non-formal education of youth and not to uh, education at, at institutional, uh, higher educational level. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I've seen the, the guide. But um, yeah, I think that the capacity building program is not disappeared forever. I mean, capacity building in higher education and, and the new calls for next year should include also the capacity building. But yeah, we will see how the next calls and guidelines will be. But yeah, so far there are no calls for, for that. But, I, but, I, but well, as far, as far as we know, there should be uh, more or less the same program for, for next year. And yeah, that, that could be if it would be similar and if it will be still there, perhaps that, could, that capacity, um, as I mentioned, the curricular development uh, strain could, uh, could help. Um, Hussein, uh, we have a question for Fauzi, and then we are really running out of time, so I think we could also start um, closing the conversation. Uh, how can I share a page with multi-resources? Uh, each resource has its own license. Huh. Yeah. Uh, Hussein, uh, if... You know, first of all, uh, that's why, you know, I, I showed you a, uh, this uh, uh, matrix about how to mix two, two or three or four different licenses. The thing is, uh, and this is, uh, as I said, it's not, uh, it's beyond this webinar. Maybe uh, when we talk about uh, hands-on, how to work with those licenses, uh, uh, mixing licenses, it's, uh, it's not complicated, but it just needs some training, what you can do, what you cannot do. The thing is, if you go back and uh, when I share the presentation, you, you look at the matrix, you know, it will show you which license or which resource with which license you can share it. Uh, you can mix it with another resource with a different license, tell you what you can do, what you cannot do. But, you know, if you have 10 resources uh, with the appropriate license that you can mix together, you have no problem in sharing it. You know, you have no problem whatsoever. The important thing is, is to be able to understand that, uh, for example, the no derivative, the equal sign, if you find a resource with the equal sign and you bring it and try to share it with CC BY, you cannot do this because no derivative, you cannot share it with nobody, you cannot modify it, you cannot do anything with it, you just use it as is. So that's why, you know, 
uh, the, the compatibility chart of license is very important in my presentation. You can take a look at it. And if you need more, uh, you know, I, I, anyway, uh, the thing is, this is the, I, I wrote my email and I will, uh, I will write it again, you know, in case you have uh, more questions in the future. Uh, I'll be, I'll be, uh, I'll be ready to, let me just, I'll be ready to answer your question or whatever, you know, I'm, I'm here, I'm here. Thank you, Fadi. You are always one click away indeed. I have to say that you are always very supportive and well, thank you for all your um, contributions. Good, so um, we continue the conversation on Padlet. Um, Amina will share the recording there and the slides. Um, we can use the Padlet to continue the conversation. Let's keep in mind this idea of this Mediterranean Open University Network. Let's see how it will go. If you are inspired by the idea and want to start uh, developing it, with us a little bit more, that would be really fantastic. I'm very much available to work in it, but if, well, in the next month, we can just keep this in mind and we will continue our consultations with the board of directors of Unimed and other universities. Next conversation will be uh, next month uh, with Saida Fune from uh, Anaja National University in Palestine about E assessment and you will get a confirmation by email and I hope she will get well very soon. Thank you, Fabio. Thank you, Thank you Fazi, for your extraordinary presentation Thank you. and uh, talk to you all soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ciao. Bye, Fabio. Bye, everybody. Bye. Yeah. Ciao. Ciao.